Expect hotter, longer and more frequent heat waves in the next 15 years. The Climate Council says the extreme conditions are also intensifying. This is not a lens glare. Nobody's still really sure what this is. I still feel it's a craft of some sort. Okay, the little red dude's disappearing, coming out from behind the clouds in a matter of seconds here. And there it is. See what I mean? So. Oh, this video is going to take forever to upload. Should be coming into complete clear here in a second. Okay, so let's see how many how many of you think that this is a lens glare now. Again, I just proved it's not. I look off to the right hand side of the video, you'll see the lens glare there, the, blue, the red and the yellow. That's the lens glare off to the right. But that is definitely the moon and whatever is underneath of it. So, alright. Clouds are coming up. And the moon should cover up first. Okay. Well, they're both covering up. Okay. So is this proved this is not a lens glare? But this suppressed astronomical story about Nibiru's crossover and how it will alter the Earth and the solar system just happens to be one of those many things that are being kept in the dark. As I mentioned, there are strange happenings taking place within the interior of our planet. 
This is something that is being reported because it is a story that cannot be hidden from the public. It is there to be seen and noticed. Why are giant fountains of lava suddenly pouring out of some of the most dangerous volcanoes on the entire planet? And why are so many long dormant volcanoes suddenly roaring back to life? According to Volcano Discovery, 35 major volcanoes either are erupting right now or have just recently erupted and dozens of others are stirring. Something is pushing magna up through the crust of the earth at a number of key spots around the planet. The spectacular eruption of Mount Etna in Italy is making headlines all over the world. This latest eruption is the second this year and comes just a month after Mount Etna experienced a flurry of activity in late January. On the island of Sicily, the giant fountains of lava that are coming out of Mount Etna can be seen 30 kilometers away, as seen in this video clip. On the other side of the world, a constant stream of molten rock has been springing out of Guatemala's volcano of fire since February 25th. It was the volcano's second eruption this year. And in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, a fire hose of lava has been pouring out of the Kilauea volcano since December 31st. Take a look. Meanwhile, a number of large volcanoes that have been dormant for a very long time all over the world have started springing back to life. For instance, the only active volcano in India has suddenly started spewing lava and ash after having been silent for 150 years. So many of these long dormant volcanoes are roaring back to life. And why this is suddenly happening now is puzzling many of the experts. And as you have seen, this isn't isolated to just one or two geographic regions. It literally is happening all over the globe. 
Last month, Indonesia's Mount Sinabung in the southern hemisphere erupted seven times in the space of a single day, while authorities in the northern hemisphere were warning us that four of Iceland's biggest volcanoes are preparing to erupt. Indonesia and Iceland are about as far apart as you can get, and yet they are both being affected by this worldwide phenomenon. Now, without a doubt, something definitely appears to also be causing a significant increase in worldwide seismic activity. So let's talk about earthquakes for a moment. A website known as The Big Wobble recently published an article that included two extraordinary maps. The first map showed the number of major earthquakes from January 1900 to January of 1917. And the second map showed the number of major earthquakes since the beginning of this century. The difference between the two maps was startling, to say the least. It is becoming extremely difficult to deny that something is happening to the crust of our planet, and many are becoming concerned about what we could soon experience if the level of seismic activity continues to rise. We already talked about Mount Etna, but a much greater threat in Italy appears to be awakening under the city of Naples. A massive supervolcano known as Campi Flagre is close to a critical state, and if it erupts, the consequences will be beyond catastrophic. The following comes from the National Geographic. A long, quiet, yet huge supervolcano that lies under a half a million people in Italy may be waking up and approaching a critical state. Based on physical measurements and computer modeling, magma could be approaching the critical degassing pressure at the volcano in the metropolitan area of Naples, one of the most densely inhabited areas in the world and where accelerating deformation and heating are currently being observed. If that supervolcano were to fully erupt, millions would die, the skies in the northern hemisphere would be darkened for months, and the resulting volcanic winter would cause famines all around the globe. Kyle from Hillsboro, Oregon sent me some incredible pictures of the sky, um, a phenomenon that he's been noticing on and off for the last couple of weeks. He said it needs to be cloudy, otherwise he doesn't notice this phenomenon. Here's a picture he sent me from two in the morning. It emanates from a bright pink, which um, he was not able to photograph, but it trails off into a dark, deep purple. I originally thought there was a fire burning um, near, but that was not the case. And in this one here, it was dark red. I haven't done anything to it. That's exactly how he sent it. These pictures here, he said, were the ones that were purple, but it didn't show up as well in the camera. He said it's actually gorgeous in person. So he's from Hillsboro, Oregon, seeing this in the 2 a.m. hours of the night sky. Here's a picture he sent me from, this was last night. This is looking due south. You can see the orange cloud. He thought there was a fire. There wasn't a fire. So if you guys are experiencing this or know anybody that is, can you send your pictures here? And the reason I'm doing a video about this uh, is because I've had somebody tell me from North Carolina, the opposite side of the country, saw the same thing. Dark red skies in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. No storms, uh, just clouds. That is, it's actually uh, very impressive. Look at that. Show you on Google Earth. Right here is Hillsboro. Some of these, maybe it's coming from the ocean. Um, North Carolina, I don't know if that one was coastal or not. This isn't directly coastal, but you know, it's closer than the ocean than I am. And here's what the sky is looking like. 2 a.m. Pretty crazy. Remember the purple sky? This was two hours before the Houston tornado outbreak back last month. So it didn't happen right when the tornadoes were happening. This was hours before the earth or the uh, tornadoes broke out. So there's purple. 
um, in Houston. Blood Red up in Oregon. And he saw him in the northeast, coming down to the southeast, in the south, uh, drifting to the, the, the east-southeast. Unbelievable pictures. Absolutely beautiful. And he said they're, they're, they're more beautiful in person. That is uh, quite impressive, I must say. And I've looked at the possibility of maybe it's sulfur dioxide from the ongoing volcanic eruption in Hawaii that does get caught in the jet sometimes that drifts right towards that location. Sulfur dioxide is colorless, so it's not that. Looked at the map, watched for different types of weather anomalies, maybe in his area up here that could be responsible for that. And I can't conclude anything from this that would be a, a red cloud, a red sky. Very, very uh, interesting. So if you have any pictures of a red sky, like our friend Kyle here from uh, Oregon, please share them with us. We would love to see them. I have some other incredible pictures I'm going to share in a video tomorrow. And we're going to do a weekly video of the pictures that you guys share. All of the pictures that you guys share. We're going to do a video just of picture share, sky pictures, of anything of, uh, of uniqueness. I want the white stop signs too, signs in general. Whatever you guys want to share, bring it. I'll do a video about it. I really do appreciate it. So there you have it, guys. I don't know what's going on, but we're seeing red skies up in northern Oregon.
storm system that caused hundreds of lightning strikes is lingering over the city tonight. An indication of that is, is a temperature reading that we call the dew point. That was very high this morning, one of the highest readings in March that we've had. But it's not just that these events are unusual, it's that they're unprecedented. Meanwhile, a staggering statistic out of Chicago. There's rain in the northwest and snow where you'd expect it. The Windy City had no measurable snow during January and February for the first time in 146 years. A rare bit of normal in a bizarre winter. In a normal winter, Illinois is blanketed in snow, not battered by tornadoes like this deadly twister on Tuesday. It's uh, mind-blowing. Uh, we've never had anything like it since I've been around. And it's just, um, it's pretty wild. We can say without a doubt that heat waves are occurring more frequently. They're lasting longer. All these are the beginning of birth pains. But then he comes to the word, it's interesting, he says, but then. And when he says then, he starts talking about what we might say, if we're going to put it in into uh, pregnancy terms, that there will begin this time of hard labor. And we know that in terms of the gestational cycle, that when a woman begins to be very near delivery, she begins to feel abdominal pains and cramps uh, much more significantly, much more severe. It becomes evident because this is discomfort of a different kind. Has warned the drought in the region, in the Horn of Africa, is creating a potential humanitarian disaster. Somalia's Prime Minister says some 110 people have died in the south of the country in the last two days from famine. It is imperative for us to help each other, as the magnitude of this drought is very alarming. The crisis in Somalia is unprecedented. One of the things that re results in recurrent drought is the issue of the effect of climate change. There is an enormous amount of work and good work, critical scientific work going on all over the planet to understand this phenomena of climate change. And what Jesus wanted us to understand is that when we come to the times of the end, it's not going to be like we can't recognize it, because not only have we been given information about what's coming in the world, but it's going to be pretty obvious that this is not normal, that the world is moving in directions heretofore unseen. It's grazing time in Mongolia, but the animals, weak and wary from one of the harshest winters in decades, seem reluctant to move. While in California, there's been so much snow that a five-year-long drought may finally be over after one of California's wettest winters on record. And so far, even one of Hawaii's mountains has gotten more snow than Denver. Most years, Vermont maple syrup farmers like Dave Silloway would be trudging through three feet of snow. Their task is easier this season. And across the country, it's likely to mean harsher bushfire conditions, longer and hotter heat waves, an increase in the number of severe thunderstorms and more intense cyclones and rain, while extreme droughts are expected to become more frequent and last longer.